Scala has a very powerful concept of implicits. This is something that allows us to extend classes in an implicit way. In this section, we'll be focusing on this construct. So firstly, we'll be looking at the implicit conversions. We'll see how can we convert things in an implicit way. We'll be looking at the implicit parameters. We'll understand resolution of implicits, so how they are looked at and how compiler determines the scope from which the implicit should be imported. And finally, we'll be debugging our implicits. This is the first video on which we'll be focusing on implicit conversions. So we'll be converting types, we'll be leveraging implicit conversions mechanism. And also, finally, we'll be doing our testing. So let's go to code. So here is a simple code, but yet it is very powerful. So we have some of methods, but let's start from the test. So test states that it should use implicit conversions. We have a method with tags and we are passing here the big decimal or something different. For us, it looks like a long or float or something else than big decimal. So we have a method with tags and it takes a price of big decimal. Scala is automatically converting that for big decimal. So implicits are not needed here. But then there is an another parameter. So second parameter is an implicit tax rate. If you remember section two, you will remember the carrying technique. So we had a function that returns function. So the function that uses carrying is written in a similar way, but here we are using a little bit different technique. This is not a function returned, but it is another parameter that is passed to method. We can pass it in an implicit way or explicit way. Here we are telling our compiler by using implicit keyword to look up for the implicit in our scope. If the tax rate is defined as an implicit variable, it will be imported to that method and we can omit passing this parameter. So we can see that at this moment when you are not passing implicit, the compiler is trying to find out tax rate that is defined as an implicit variable. You can see that we have a sales tax, tax rate, and you are creating tax rate of 0.075%. So it will be taken as an argument automatically because it is present in our scope. Then we have a method that we are multiplying price by tax rate plus one. So we are extracting rate from the implicit parameter. So then at the result, we have 16.1250. So if you will start the test, you will see that everything compiles properly and works as expected because our implicit was in the scope. So if you will not have that implicit, there will be comply by the compiler. Compiler is saying that there is no such parameter, but we are fine with it also because we can, for example, pass that parameter explicitly. So let's pass something like 20, or we can even pass exactly the same value here. So if you will pass exactly the same value, you are just invoking the with tax method with both parameters, both that is required because this is a price, and second parameter is an implicit. So implicit will be passed here. Let's take a look at the default parameter. So also there is a third option. So if there is no implicit in your scope, you can give your implicit a default value. So if the implicit was not imported, the default will be taken and still we don't need to pass that second parameter. But what will happen if we will have implicit and the default defined? So let's change the default for something different, like for example, one, then our test, of course, will be not passing. If this is taken, if implicit, it will pass. So we can see that our test pass. So it means that if the implicit is within our scope here, the default is not taken. So it is equivalent to passing that argument argument explicitly. So if you will pass it here, it is equivalent to having implicit in your context. So if you will start the test, your test will pass and this tax rate that is a default parameter argument will be ignored.